Holiness, distinguished ministers, members of the parliament, uh, ladies, first of all, I have to admit that this is a particular privilege and honor for me to speak at the woman, woman conference for the first time in my life. <laughs> and I would like to thank His Holiness Sri Sri Ravi Shankar for this extraordinary privilege and honor. I never saw so many women in one place. So, so. <laughs> and another, another sentence I have to say that I never attended a conference on which harmony would be a keyword. Uh, and I would say that harmony uh, is a very dangerous word. And if there was a harmony, politicians wouldn't have to do much at all. No. Because we are dealing with conflicts, with problems, uh, you know, because you are many politicians here and you know what I'm talking about. And I think that all the societies and all the communities have to find the answer to the question how to live together with differences. Uh, let's move a little bit to the European history. We will celebrate in this year the beginning of the First World War. A few years later, we will celebrate 100 years of the Communist Revolution. In the same century, Europe generated two world wars and three totalitarianisms, fascism, Nazism, and communism. Three ideologies of evil, as John Paul II uh, uh, would qualify them. Europeans survived a century of violence, and many others suffered as well. The ideologies I have just mentioned uh, and aggressive nationalisms tended to simplify the world by using the exclusive concept of power and the concept of political monoculture. They systematically eliminated or marginalized those who they identified as different or too different. And this le lead leads to exclusive and polarized societies with second-class citizens. Then, soon after the end of the Second World War, a beacon of light enlightened the European perspective. The founding fathers of the European Union, before they decide to sign the historic treaty on the community of steel and coal, they agreed on the culture and foundation of the new European project on respect for dignity of each human person. This is the foundation of the European peace and cooperation. The historic enemies who were fighting for centuries against each other decided for reconciliation. Since then, Europe has not been restructuring by force, but by free will of free nations who have wished to share the same values and principles in a united Europe. Since then, the European nations, European politicians and citizens have been speaking about unity in diversity, about Europe as a soft power. Since then, Europe has been known as a political entity wishing to share and not to impose. We do partnership with our partners and not alliances. What we share have been, first of all, respect for human dignity and human rights gender equality included, democracy, rule of law, and social market economy. These are today European political export products uh, we are proud of and we like to share them. Now I would like to make a bridge between my more general political considerations and the objectives uh, of, of this uh, uh, conference. How to bring harmony in an increasingly violent world? This is not just a question of personal harmony. We need a social harmony as well. We need both of them. We need also harmony with the nature we live in. 
And I know I speak to the women who have a say or wish to have a stronger say in their respective countries, in their societies. We are here because we like a violence-free world, violence-free societies, violence-free neighborhoods. We are aware that violence does not mean only war and terrorism. Corruption is a kind of social violence against those who live and act in an honest way. We need harmony because we are different. And we know how many people are facing problems, problems because they are different or the other thing that they are different or too different. And to be different does not mean that our dignity can be of different size. There is no bigger or smaller dignity. There is just a dignity of everybody. And my dignity is of the same value as somebody else's dignity is. I think this is quite harmonious starting position. Uh, and this is where and why respect for human dignity plays its crucial role. Let me move finally to the personal aspect of, of the question. I don't believe in somebody's successful work to outer peace if she or he does not live in harmony with her or himself. Inner peace is prerequisite for outer peace. Inner peace is our responsibility and our chance. The more we discover our true human nature, the stronger will be our inner peace, which is an essential dimension of happiness. And I like very much the innovative terminal, terminology of this conference. Let's work on increasing the gross domestic happiness. Reflections and factors that influence our relationships at all, uh, uh, are all very, very uh, important. Uh, approaches to increase awareness of restoring harmony which nature is needed. Uh, and uh, I think that the impact of society, uh, the impact of leaders uh, on the societies um, uh, could, be, could be very, very strong, uh, uh, strong ones. Uh, and I think that um, we cannot live in a perfect harmony if my neighbor, if the others are living in unhuman uh, conditions. And harmony means always relationship. Relationship with myself first, with my God, with somebody else. And it begins with self-respect and respect uh, for the others. I wish this conference a great, a great success. And thank you very much for this privilege to speak today. Yeah.